Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and today's video is one that I was planning on cutting up and editing into a segment for a Why You Have To Be Mad video but I feel like it deserves its own video. This is Over the Sea. He is in a random battle in the Kamikaze R. This is a premium tier 5 Japanese destroyer. Well, technically the Kamikaze R is an event ship, although it's identical in all respects other than appearance to the other tier 5 premium Japanese destroyer, the Kamikaze. And while the Kamikaze R was only available during the Project R events, occasionally Wargaming do put its sister ship, the Kamikaze, on sale in the premium shop. And if it ever does go on sale, and you have the slightest interest in Japanese destroyers, or what Japanese destroyers were like before they all started to suck, you should definitely get this ship. It is very, very good. Wait, what's that, Jingles? Japanese destroyers suck? Well, they kind of do. You see, the Kamikaze and the Kamikaze R here is basically what the Minikaze used to be like way back, you know, when it was actually a very good ship. But the problem with the Japanese destroyers is that they're essentially just really one-trick ponies. They're good for firing torpedoes from stealth and that's about it. And that'll get you a lot of kills and you'll score a lot of damage at tiers 2, 3, 4 and 5 because generally at that tier a lot of players haven't really figured out how to avoid torpedoes yet, or even the threat of torpedoes. From tier 6, 7, 8, 9 and all the way up to tier 10, most players have figured it out, and they also have additional tools to help them avoid torpedoes and stealth destroyers in the first place, like hydroacoustic search, spotter planes, and radar. And of course, the higher up the tiers you go, the longer your torpedo reload tends to become. So you're firing less torpedoes at targets that are better at avoiding them, and have tools like radar to prevent you getting into a position where you're able to set up a torpedo attack in the first place, and tools like hydroacoustic search to spot your torpedoes even if you do manage to get into a good firing position. Higher tier Japanese destroyer captains attempting to make the most of their superior stealth abilities to sneak a few caps under their belts have to run the gauntlet of all the radar cruisers, not to mention the radar battleships like the Missouri, and of course when you do get spotted in a Japanese destroyer, you tend on average to be slower than your German, American and Soviet counterparts so you can't outrun the gunboats that go chasing after you. Life can be very very difficult for a higher tier Japanese destroyer captain. Never really used to be that way, but well, various different nerfs and power creep and enhancements to other classes and nations has made life very difficult for a high tier Japanese destroyer captain. Down here at tier 5, however, in the Kamikaze or the Kamikaze R, it's just as glorious as it used to be in our Minikazes back in the open beta test. It's seal clubbing, of course. I mean, pure and simple. I'm not going to attempt to dress it up and say that there's anything noble about this. <laughs> oh, no. No, it, it, this is seal clubbing at its finest. Um, but, well, I mean, who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> um, is there even any point in trying to contain the flooding? <laughs> no. I thought not. I think at that point the New York was just, pff, don't even care anymore. <laughs> and now it's the turn of the Phoenix. Now remember, the Phoenix has just watched that New York get obliterated right in front of him barely seconds ago. Right now he has a choice. He can turn to the left and sail around the far side of the island, which will put the island between him and any further torpedoes, or he can sail around this side of the island which means that if he does spot any torpedoes, he's only got one way to turn, because he can't turn into the island, because it's an island. I do have to say, I find it deliciously ironic that the captain of that phoenix is called Fatal Error. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, you couldn't make this shit up. I should probably point out that I'm laughing because it's funny. It is funny. I'm not laughing specifically at the Captain of the Phoenix. I'm more laughing at the situation that he put himself into. And I realise that there has been something of a trend in the videos that I've uploaded this week, and that trend has been stupid players are stupid. But, well, you kind of have to draw a distinction between idiots and newbies. 
The Phoenix is only a tier 4 cruiser, the guy playing that ship may have only been playing the game for two days. You just don't know. Not only that, at the point where the New York got torpedoed in front of him, he was hit again barely 20 seconds later. That's because the Kamikaze R only has a 47 second reload, and by the time his torpedoes reached the New York, he only had 13 or 14 seconds left to go before he was ready to fire the torpedoes again. So it's entirely possible that the Phoenix thought, well, the torpedoes have just been fired, I'm safe. Except no, he wasn't. <laughs> and that's why it's funny. Speaking of funny, watch this carrier. Now this guy is an idiot. Noob or not, okay, he just got hit by two torpedoes sailing in a straight line directly towards over the seas kamikaze are. So he has no excuse for not realizing that there's a destroyer in front of him. Let's wait and see what he does. Now in the length of time between his getting hit by those torpedoes, over the sea has launched a further set of torpedoes at the Miyogi. And the Miyogi may not, because he's only just arrived, have seen what happened to the New York and the Phoenix. He may not necessarily be aware, although if he'd been paying attention he probably should be, but again it's only tier 4, you can't expect miracles at this sort of level. So he may not be aware that there is a destroyer out here, but he's about to be. Because of those six torpedoes fired, he sails straight into four of them. And there's the high caliber award with 129,000 damage done. Now the Miyogi does use his damage control because he didn't take as many torpedoes as the New York and he does start repairing. And he does start taking steps to avoid any further torpedoes fired by the mystery destroyer out on the flank. The same cannot be said of that Langley aircraft carrier who after taking two torpedoes is still sailing the same course and the same speed has not sent any aircraft out to clear the sea ahead of him of the destroyer that he has to know is lurking out here so he deserves everything that's going to happen to him. The Miyogi however, well he's one step ahead of the Phoenix that preceded him, he's managed to get the island between himself and over the seas. Yep, there goes the Langley, no big surprises there and thoroughly well deserved too. But what the Miyogi is not doing is varying his course and speed so he's making himself a very, very predictable target for the next set of torpedoes. And in fact, over the sea is so confident that he's going to kill this Miyogi that he's rather contemptuously only bothered to fire one of his torpedo launchers at him. So that's two torpedoes in the water. It's probably only going to take one, of course, if it causes flooding, because the Miyogi's damage control is likely to be on cooldown. But, well, you can probably count on the fingers of one head the number of people who were surprised to see both of those torpedoes strike home. And that just leaves the Marblehead. Now that Marblehead has been around this end of the map the entire game. He was initially in the lead ship of the enemy squadron that sailed up here on the northern end of the map. He led the charge, got spanked by over the seas teammates further to the south, pulled back, and now he's circling back around for some more. So this guy has personally witnessed all four of his teammates die to torpedo attack at the hands of over the sea. This guy is at least paying attention. He's seen the torpedoes, or he saw the first spread of torpedoes, and then started turning into the second and third spread, spotted them just in time, and threaded the needle between the torpedo salvo, and now he's spotted over the sea. Over the sea, for the first time this game, uses his smoke generator. Up until now he's had to rely on staying outside of surface detection range of his targets because if you stray inside surface detection range you're the only ship up here to spot them and you pop your smoke screen you can't see the targets that you're shooting at anymore. So in anticipation of the Marblehead turning his guns on him he's deployed his smoke generator but the Marblehead is actually shooting at targets further to the south which means that for the first time this game over the sea is quite free to start turning his guns on the Marblehead. And the poor old Marblehead is trying to defend himself against gunfire coming in from the south and he's slowing in an attempt to avoid any torpedoes fired by over the sea while also getting pummeled by over the sea's guns. And he may have dodged two <laughs> of those torpedo salvos but he didn't dodge the third. Five kills, Kraken unleashed, 155,000 damage done. Mostly, it has to be admitted, against completely oblivious players who have not yet learned to respect 
the kamikaze are, and low-tier Japanese destroyers in general. But still, if it's funny once, it's funny every time. <laughs> <laughs> and despite the fact that there were still two enemy ships remaining, that is game over. Because that team sucked so bad, they actually finished that match with zero points. <laughs> yes, that can happen. Over the sea, thank you for sending that one in. You dirty, filthy seal club are you. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.